you usually see the most improvement with every football team. And I think with our team, we there's lots of ways that we can improve. Um, you know, when you when you watch the film from this past week, we made a lot of mistakes, uh, really a lot of unforced errors, and can't beat ourselves. You got to make the other team beat you. You know, we've got uh, East Tennessee State this week, and Coach Sanders uh, will do a, do an excellent job. You know, offensively they're very balanced, uh, um, running and passing the football. They take care of the ball defensively. They created a lot of negative plays uh, last week, and they're very sound in the kicking game. So. I'm sure he's familiar with us, definitely on the defensive side, and, and we're probably a little bit familiar with him on the offensive side, so it'll be fun to compete and play, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Rick? Hey, Jeremy. The quarterback running, whether by design or by need, is that something you'd like to see more of or is necessary for success on offense? Well, I think, um, you know, every time a quarterback runs the football, there's, you know, there's opportunities for him to take licks. I think it's important to have a guy that can extend plays and, and you can keep the defense honest, um, you know, with him being able to run quarterback runs. Um, you know, if you look in our league, uh, the guys that are running quarterbacks, they're usually a lot better at the beginning of the year than they are at the end of the year. Uh, so I, I would say, yeah, you want a quarterback who makes the guys around him better. Um, make them play at their best, a guy that, that don't make very many mistakes, but and if he can run, that's probably a plus. David Oven and Blake. Uh, how do you describe the year that you spent with Randy? You know, Randy is uh, he's, he's a very good football coach. He's a really good teacher. He done a fantastic job the year I was there with the quarterbacks, with Jameis. Um, you know, he, he was heavily involved in the game plan. Um, you know, he, he gets it. Um, you know, he's a, he's a good team player on the staff. Um, and he's an average golfer. <laughs> Blake Topmeyer. Here. Being an update on Ty Chandler and also uh, Todd Kelly Jr., why didn't he travel to Charlotte? Well, um, Ty got his bail wrong Saturday, so. Um, our, our physicians are going through the normal routine of that. And, you know, Todd, Todd's, Todd's done a really good job trying to get back from this leg injury. Uh, it was a pretty significant injury, and when you come back from something like that, it takes a little while for your muscles and everything to kind of catch back up. So when you got fall camp going on, just the, the fatigue and kind of getting back in the groove, and uh, he's getting close, but he's not, he's not uh, probably ready just yet. Vince, Jimmy Austin. Coach, when you guys evaluated the tape for the offensive line, how much was it, uh, some of the errors that you saw, how much was technique, how much was maybe missed assignments or lack of communication since you haven't really been able to get the same guys for a while? Yeah, I think if you looked at um, on both sides of the ball, and special teams too, um, we, we made some unforced errors. Um, you know, I think some of the looks that maybe West Virginia gave us was because of that. And, uh, some of it was probably some lack of experience. Um, and we've got to fix it. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to have success on either side of the ball if you make mistakes, uh, especially if they're unforced. So we've really got to improve that part of it. You, you've got to make the other team beat you. Um, and, and we've got to address that this week. Jimmy, a couple of things. One, are you concerned with the confidence level of the team? And secondly, how do you think the team responded to adversity center? You know, there's uh, you kind of look at it from, a, from an offensive standpoint. Um, obviously, we didn't start out very well uh, as the game went. Um, there was a lot more positives than negatives. You know, unfortunately, we had a, you know, a penalty down in the red area late in the game, uh, went from first and goal to seven to uh, first and goal to 12, and we didn't get it in. Um, you know, twice we had second and twos after really good positive plays on first down and didn't convert on third down, ended up having to punt the football. Um, and, you know, some of that had to do with the looks we saw, some of it had to do with us. 
we've got to be able to finish and take advantage of that. But when you start off looking to me, you grade an offense by, um, you know, how many yards you gain per play. So you would say four more is a win and, you know, four less is a loss. And our guys started off probably in the first 25 plays. We had a whole lot more losses than we had wins. That's a game win if that changed. But we've got to play a complete game uh, on both sides of the ball. You look at it on defense the same way, when, you know, West Virginia started with a really good field position in the first half, and our guys played okay. Uh, we, we made some mistakes, they made some plays, uh, but we held them the field goes. But in the second half, the field was flipped, and they drove the ball through us two or three times. So, um, you know, I guess you could say in the first half, offensively, we didn't handle it first as well as we needed to, but we didn't quit. The guys kept trying to find a way. And defense, we would probably handle it better in the first half than we did the second half. Confidence level? Well, I think confidence level, uh, that comes with knowing what you're supposed to do. Um, you know, if you do the same thing over and over, uh, you know, it breeds, you know, familiarity. You, you've got an understanding of what you're trying to get done. So you develop confidence. Uh, you know, we've got to find a way to hone in on what we do well, uh, continue to try to do that. Things we don't do well, find a way to fix it and, and develop some confidence as a team. Awesome. Coach, how big are the next two weeks before you enter conference play for some of those young defensive linemen like Kingston Harris and Emmett Good and, and, and your ability to find somebody that can get to the quarterback? And then can you about also tell us how you felt like Jerome Carvin did in that first half when he was able to go in and play some guard? Well, I would say every week's important for us. Um, you know, we, we've got to take every opportunity to improve as a, first of all, as, a, as an individual and as a football team, as a unit. Um, you know, so it'll definitely, I, I'm ready to get on the practice field and get going. I hope our guys, I saw a lot of them this morning working out. Uh, so I, I think our guys will. Um, I think we'll do a better job as a coaching staff getting them ready uh, for the next week. And we, we've got to develop depth on our football team in uh, lots of different positions. So um, it'll be important, all the practice reps we get every week throughout the season. You know, Jerome, uh, Jerome's a guy that, you know, he, he broke his foot this summer. So he didn't get to do a lot of stuff during the summer conditioning and uh, really just got released right before fall camp started. So he was a little bit limited going into fall camp. And he was a guy that had a really good spring. You know, he needed the summer, which he missed. Um, but is catching back up, and I think he's got a chance to, to be a solid football player for us this year. Steve Patrick West, Brent. Just on film, how do you feel Trey did in terms of just the left tackle and just coming back from short preseason? Also, just what does it mean to the program, to the line, to have him come back from what he had come back from this offseason? Well, I think Trey played hard. Um, you know, he, he obviously made some mistakes uh, and probably things that he'll improve on just based off taking more reps. Uh, but he did compete hard, uh, so that's that's positive. And, and I think he's only going to get better each week. He's obviously he's going to get to practice and improve and see you know, some more looks, and he's used to playing with the guys beside him, so um, he'll, he'll get better each week. Patrick? Jeremy, you talked a little bit ago, and also on your own character show, something about some of the mental mistakes on defense, whether they're more than maybe you were expecting, and uh, I guess what, what would you attribute some of those mistakes to young players or, or just a first game of your defense? Well, you, you, have, you have mental errors, which are we don't know what to do. Uh, we didn't have very many mental errors. Uh, we had technical errors, uh, which comes from creating the right practice habits, understanding what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it that way. Um, and, you know, does it come from lack of experience? Uh, probably. But, you know, I've seen guys that, that don't have much experience do it pretty well. You know, so, and I've seen guys that have a ton of experience sometimes can't seem to get it right. So, I think it's, you know, probably according to the individual, but I think we got guys that, 
that we'll learn a lot from this past game, uh, and I think we'll see a lot of improvement with these guys over the next couple of weeks. Wes? Jerry, what are your thoughts on, uh, on J.J. Peterson finally getting into school and kind of completing that, that signing class? And what, if anything, can you expect from a, a kid who gets here after the season starts? Well, you know, for one, he, it's going to be the first time he's, he's attended a college class. You know, I think it's important for freshmen to get here during the summer so they can kind of get acclimated to the routine. Uh, so there'll be lots of adjustments for him. He obviously missed all the summer conditioning, fall camp. So, you know, I, I wouldn't put unreal, unrealistic expectations on him. Um, you know, we'll put him out there and start trying to teach him. Um, really the fundamentals of things that we're trying to get done. Um, and, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. Brent. Coach, you said you guys as a, as a staff, you all had to do a better job of getting the guys ready to play moving forward. What, what is, kind of what specifically, without giving away game plan, obviously, what do you mean by what you have to do a better job of getting them ready to play? Well, from a technical standpoint, where they understand the techniques, uh, they understand why we're doing them, and we execute it. Um, you know, you don't, you definitely don't want to have minimal errors. Uh, and obviously, we had we had some up front uh, on the offensive line, and and uh, you know with the tight ends at the point of attack. You know, so you got to give your your running backs a chance. Um, you know, if you, um, when you're running the football, if you know who to block and you step in the right direction and play with the right pad level and, and play with the whistle blows, you, you give yourself a chance. And we had guys that that played hard, played the right pad level, uh, played to a whistle blue, but wasn't always going in the right direction. And we got to do a good job figuring out what our guys know, uh, give them a chance to execute so we can have success. Rob and David. Coach, just how did you evaluate Jerry's play on Saturday? I guess specifically, one thing he struggled with last year was making quick decisions, getting rid of the ball. What did you think he made progress on what you see? Well, he didn't turn the football over, uh, which is always a positive at the quarterback position. I thought he was accurate. You know, um, there's probably three or four plays out there that um, maybe when we had an RPO zone that, you know, he could have took the, the pass option that he didn't. You know, but uh, I thought Jared done done really well for the first game. There's lots of things that he can improve on, and, and he knows that. Uh, thought he showed toughness. Uh, he took a couple of hits, hung in the pocket, made a good decision down on the goal line on third and one, third and two when he sprinted out. There wasn't nothing there. He got back to the line of scrimmage, which allowed us to go for it on fourth down. Um, you know, he completed some third down balls, so I, I thought there was a lot of positives. David Cobb, then Nathaniel Jesse. Uh, Jeremy, what's it like to review game film with freshmen and defensive backs who have just played their first game? Well, I haven't watched the tape with them yet. We'll watch it today, but um, it's just like I told them the first day I got here. You know, when we play a game, it'll be about what we did or didn't do. Uh, and that's not to take anything away from anybody that will ever play. Um, but if you look at it on in every phase of the game, if we execute and, and do the things that we're taught, and how we practice and how we train, um, you know, we'll have a chance to win every game. Um, we were not consistent enough in doing that, um, you know, on either side of the ball. And we're playing a, a really good football team that's well coached, and and uh, you know it didn't turn out the way we'd like for it to. Thank you. Coach, first time coaching a game, you know, as a head coach, how would you evaluate yourself, and how different was it for you the experience of being a head coach, like rather than just a coordinator? In a game? Well, I tell you, it, it's uh, it's a little bit different. Um, I got to do a better job uh, where I can contribute on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, and I think there's lot, lots of lessons that I can take from this game. Um, you know, really, you know, I'm a, I'm a defensive-minded guy. Um, so when you're sitting there watching the offense, I, you know, I, I need to know what exactly what I can do to help give probably some influence to the offense, you know. So 
I, I need to do a better job of that in the game. And, uh, you know, I think there's probably one critical mistake just myself in the game. You know, when it's we punt into football, when we had second or third, excuse me, fourth and four with a minute and 58 seconds left, I should have let the clock run out. You know, I thought that was a critical mistake there. We could have run the clock down to a minute and 30 seconds. You know, they ended up getting a field goal there. Jesse? Jeremy, when you got to rewind the tape and watch it with the staff yesterday, what, what was kind of the biggest <coughs> offensive lesson you guys learned? Uh, just kind of being able to move forward. And, and do you feel like you guys were able to take advantage of what West Virginia was doing underneath coverage-wise? And, and would you have liked to see kind of more throws, whether it was the hitches or kind of uh, boundary throws uh, to the outside? Well, it's always easy to call the game on Sunday or Monday. Um, I think it's a, a, an offensive staff. I think probably one of the big lessons for all of us was, you know, when our guys went in the right direction, uh, we didn't have any mental errors. We had a lot of success. Uh, when we didn't, we, we didn't have success. So the key to the drill is teaching our guys what to do, how to do it, why it's important to do it that way. And when we do that, if we play with the right temperament, we'll be fine. Coach, a little bit more about Randy. What can you expect from a Randy Sanders-led football team? When you watch the tape, they play hard. Uh, you watch them on special teams, you watch them on defense, offensively. They're going to be very well coached. They'll be sound in all phases. Uh, they'll present you looks that you've probably not seen before. He'll know how to attack you. He'll do a great job breaking uh, all three phases down. Uh, so we'll definitely have to be ready for anything because he does a fantastic job. Last couple, Jimmy and David Oven. Jimmy, how did you feel like uh, Kirkland played as well as Shai Tuttle? You know, uh, start with Darren. You know, being the first game back, um, you know, I'm sure there's some plays that he would like to have back, you know, a couple of tackles. But, you know, Darren's a real instinctive guy, plays with toughness, has a really good understanding of what we're trying to get done. He's only going to get better the longer he stays out there on the field. Um, you know, Shy, Shy I thought was a bright spot on the defensive side. Um, you know, I thought he, he played with good pad level um, and was striking their guys up front. Um, you know, we probably probably needs to improve a little bit on pass rush and finishing on the quarterback, uh, but I thought he was solid. David Oven, and then final question, Austin. Uh, when you took over the program, what was sort of the biggest thing, biggest part of this program that you said, you know, it's my program I want to do this differently than what you do this out there. Well, to me, I really didn't look at it that way. Um, the people that I've worked for, the kind of the principles and, and foundation of what they built their program on, I've, I've sat there and got to experience it with some really good coaches. Uh, so just try to take a little bit from all of them and add some of the things that um, you know, I think I believe in. Awesome. Last question. Coach, can you update us on Ty and his status going forward? And then two, Jeremy Banks. I know got some run late in the game. Your thoughts on how he performed late? As far as Ty Channel? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Ty would, would definitely be day to day. Uh, you know, Jeremy Banks is a guy that he's a big, strong guy that is learning what to do. I think he's a really good competitor. He runs hard in practice. He's a guy that's got a chance to compete on special teams. He's got to work on ball security. He's got to work on protections. That's normal with any young running back. So um, I think he plays with the right temperament, though. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach.